I can keep staring at this, but I won't get any closer. Keep banging your head against the problem. It'll go away eventually. <laughs> I'm predictable, I know. I suppose I'll never find them on my own. You recall the demon at Therenfall? The one impersonating Lord Seeker Lucius? We never found the real Lord Seeker. Or his body. Indeed, I've seen no hint of any Seekers amongst the Red Templars. Or anywhere. I have a growing suspicion Corypheus has imprisoned them. Finding them obviously means a lot to you. I left the Order, but I can never abandon them. I cannot even claim that rescuing them would be beneficial. They wouldn't look kindly on the Inquisition. But even so, if there's a chance... If we can spare resources to follow up on these leads, Inquisitor, I would appreciate it. Care Oswin. Odd that the trail should lead us here. Ban Loren is a pious, unassuming man. What has he become involved in? He's involved in crazy, just like everyone else these days. Truer words have never been spoken. Let's see what lies within. Away with you! Promises. I should have known. The Order of Fiery Promise is a cult with strange beliefs about the Seekers. They've hounded us for centuries. Cultists. Why am I not surprised? This explains why the Seekers might be here, but not the connection to Corypheus. A Seeker. Did they torture him to death? The Promisers will pay for this. As the Seekers of Truth have proven resistant to the effects of Red Lyrium, the Elder One has seen fit to place them in your care. We claim your destiny and know that the Elder One expects your devotion as repayment. Signed by Magister Calpurnia, leader of the Venatori. Does Corypheus not realize the promises want the world to end? What use are they to him? So Corypheus sold the Seekers to these cultists? And they leapt at the chance, of course. But this doesn't explain how he captured the Seekers in the first place, or what's been done with them. We must keep looking. You sound worried. I am. The Seekers are my family. Daniel! Daniel! Can you hear me? Is you. You're alive. As are you. I'm so glad I found you. No. They put a, a demon inside me. It's tearing me up. What? You can't be possessed. That's impossible. I'm not possessed. They fed me things. I can feel it growing. The promises will pay for what they've done. No. The Lord Seeker. Of course we'll find him. If he lives, we'll... Lucius betrayed us, Cassandra. He sent us here, one by one. An important mission, he said. Lies. He was here with them all along. He's still working with them. Would he really work with these cultists? I intend to find out. Wait. Don't leave me like this, please. You should have come with me. You didn't believe in the war any more than I did. You know me. I wanted that promotion. <coughs> Go to the Maker's side, Daniel. You will be welcome. He was my apprentice. I have never known a finer young man. Now we find Lord Seeker Lucius. 
Lord Sika Lucius. Cassandra. With a woman I can only assume is the new Inquisitor. And you're the man who betrayed his own order. I presume you know we Seekers of Truth were once the original Inquisition. Oh yes. We fought to restore order in a time of madness long ago. As you do now. And we became proud. We sought to remake the world. To make it better. But what did we create? The Chantry. The Circles of Magi. A war that will see no end. And aiding Corypheus is supposed to help? Corypheus is a monster with limited ambition. And your ambition is so much greater. We Seekers are abominations, Cassandra. We created a decaying world and fought to preserve it even as it crumbled. We had to be stopped. You don't believe me? See for yourself. The secrets of our order passed to me after the former Lord Seeker was slain. The war with the mages had already begun, but it was not too late for me to do the right thing. He's completely mad, isn't he? Lord Seeker, what you've done... I know. What Corypheus did with the Templars does not matter. I have seen the future. I have created a new order to replace the old. The world will end so we can start anew. A pure beginning. Join us, Cassandra. It is the Maker's will. He was insane. He had to be. Perhaps the Envy Demon's influence? Remove the Lord Seeker so it could take over the Templars. All these wasted lives. He could not have destroyed all of us. I won't accept it. Let us return to Skyhold. I wish to see what's in this Book of Secrets. This tome has passed from Lord Seeker to Lord Seeker since the time of the Old Inquisition. And now it falls to me. That's a lot of not very exciting reading, apparently. Do you know what the Rite of Tranquility is? The last resort used on mages in the Circle, leaving them unable to cast, but depriving them of dreams and all emotion. It should only be used on those who cannot control their abilities, but that has not always been the case. Does the book say it was used for other things? No. As a seeker, I looked into... abuses. Mages made tranquil as punishment. What finally began the Mage Rebellion was the discovery the right of tranquility could be reversed. The Lord Seeker at the time covered it up. Harshly. There were deaths. It was dangerous knowledge. The shock of its discovery in addition to what happened in Kirkwall. But it appears we've always known how to reverse the right. From the beginning. That doesn't surprise me at all. We created the right of tranquility. To become a seeker, I spent months in a vigil, emptying myself of all emotion. I was made tranquil and didn't even know. Then the Vigil summoned the Spirit of Faith to touch my mind. That broke tranquility, and gave me my abilities. The Seekers did not share that secret. Not with me, not with the Chantry. Not even with... There's more. Lucius was not wrong about the Order. I thought to rebuild the Seekers once victory was ours. Now I'm not certain it deserves to be rebuilt. Rebuild the Seekers. Make them better than they were. Thank you. I could not have done this on my own. Inquisitor, I must speak with you. What is it? I must explain something first about the Montilier's fortunes. My family made their fortune as traders in Antiva, until a scandal exiled us from Orlais some ages ago. It devastated our finances. 
The Montiliers have, in fact, been in debt for over a hundred years. Debt or no, you appear to be surviving. That isn't enough. A disaster could wipe us out completely. For generations, we've done everything to keep creditors at bay. Sold our lands to stave off interest. It's just... It is infuriating to see my family still reduced to this. I'm to become head of our house. If I sell any more of our land, my family will become destitute. That cannot be my legacy to them. Is there anything I can do? I'd almost solved our problems. For a while. I negotiated a chance to reinstate the Montiliers as landed traders in Orlais. We could rebuild with that. But when I dispatched paperwork to Val Royau, I've just learned my carriers were murdered. And the documents restoring my family's trading status destroyed. Do you have any idea who murdered them? Leliana made inquiries that bore success. Comte Boivere, a nobleman in Val Royau, claims to know who killed my messengers. He has a request that you come when I meet him, so he's seen publicly conferring with you. I hope the Comte isn't making up information just to be seen with me. I will take full responsibility if that's the case, Inquisitor. I must know who killed my couriers just to harm my family. Welcome, my friend. Thank you for seeing us, Count Bover. The honor is mine. Please, sit. It's an honor to assist two such distinguished guests. I hope helping us doesn't endanger you. Hardly. Even a brush with someone as well known as yourself can become a great asset in Valroyo. Giving you the identity of those who murdered Lady Montilly's messengers seemed the least I could do. Have you heard of the House of Repose? The Assassin's League? My contacts obtained a copy of a document in the archives. Contract for a life. The House of Repose is hereby sworn to eliminate anyone attempting to overturn the Montelier's trading exile in Orlais. Overly complicated assassination plots are part of Orlesian politics, I take it. They're all too common, I'm afraid. The contract was signed by a noble family. The Du Paraquettes. But the Du Paraquettes died out as a noble line over 60 years ago. Indeed. But the contract was signed 109 years ago. How can a family try to kill you after they died out? The Du Paraquettes were our rivals. They drove the Montiliers from Val Royau. This contract was drawn up over a hundred years ago, but it wasn't invoked until I tried to overturn my family's exile. Unpleasant though it may be, the House of Repose is merely fulfilling its contractual duties. I assume you have a thought or two on this, Josephine? The Du Paraquettes still have descendants under the common branch. If we elevate them to nobility, a Du Paraquette could annul the contract on my life. Uh, that will take time, Lady Montelier. Time during which the House of Repose will be obliged to haunt you. Will they now? You are exceedingly well informed. You're not to have said you'd heard rumors at best. A bit of subterfuge. This contract on your life is an ugly business. One the House of Repose deeply regrets. But this is Orlé. Even an assassin's word is his bond. I thought you were remarkably well informed about a secret assassin's guild. Uh, we are hardly secret, my dear Inquisitor. Just normally much more reclusive. The contract on Lady Montilly's life is so unusual, we felt the courtesy of an explanation was in order. It is appreciated. Monsieur? Your idea to seek out the Duparaquette to revoke our orders is uh, an interesting one. I wish you luck. I did not come to shed blood today, Inquisitor. Only to speak. Might I pass? Why warn us about your contract and let us go? In Orlais, it is only decent to inform those involved in a contract when extraordinary circumstances conspire. And the Guild's reputation would suffer if you ignored the contract. I quite understand. Thank you, my lady. May we conclude with my departure? Go then. Good day, Your Worship. My lady, I pray we'll never meet again.
Well, I didn't think our meeting would end like this. We'll deal with these assassins. I have some thoughts. Let's discuss them back at Skyhold. I'll feel safer with the castle's walls around me. Do you hear something? Mm. Oh, goodness. Uh, Comte Poivre, is that you? Mm. Oh, the lock's been broken off. We'll find a saw. Mm. I realize the cabinet is quite valuable, Comte, but surely... A... locksmith, then? Mm. Mm. As you wish. Mm. I'm so sorry, Inquisitor. I never thought my family's trading status would trap us in an assassin's plot. Between our soldiers and spies, Skyhold's safer than anywhere else in Thedas. Yet the problem persists. I've tracked down the last two paraquets. If they become gentry, they can annul the contract on my life. We'll require a noble from Val Royaux to sponsor them, a judge to provide documents, a minister to ratify them. It's so like you to take the longest course of action, even when your life is at stake. I assume you already know everything about this mess. There is a faster way, Josephine. The original contract on your life is in the vaults of the House of Repose. If my agents infiltrate it and destroy the original, the assassin will have no obligation to chase you. Liliana, please. I want no more bloodshed over a personal affair. Don't be so stubborn, Josie. How long will it take you to gather these favors in Val Royaux? We can solve this without more deaths on either side. My people are ready, should you change your mind. I'll post a watch on our ambassador in case the House of Repose visits. I appreciate it, but I still believe elevating the Duparakets will solve this. First, we need to perform some favors in Val Royaux. I'd be happy to discuss where we could begin. Any news on the House of Repose, Inquisitor? What's the next favor we need to get these Duparakets a lordship? We need a judge of the royal court to procure documents acknowledging them as nobility again. Here's a letter from Ellerly. He's safe with his family in the Dales. My Ellery, oh bless you. The Dions will sponsor the Duparakets as a family deserving of a noble title, Inquisitor. You have my word. Now please forgive my hastiness, but I must read Ellery's words. Make her keep you. Inquisitor! What happened here? The House of Repose decided to pay a visit. The guards arrived in time, but I should have guessed the assassins would infiltrate the servants. Let's not underestimate the League of Professional Murderers. It won't happen again, Your Worship. Liliana assigned people to shadow me. They appear to have saved my life. I owe you everything, Sergeant. Only my duty, Ambassador. I'll talk with the Spy Master about these murderous louts. She'll find how they got in. What's the next favor we need to get these Duparakets a lordship? We must persuade Minister Belize to ratify the papers. She's in charge of these matters of rank. The minister will be at a small fete thrown by the Marquis Wiscott. I'll get you an invitation. Thank you for seeing me in private, Minister Belize. I chastise you for taking me from the party, Inquisitor, but the Marquis throws such dull affairs, it's hardly worth it. I assume you wish to discuss your petition to elevate these Duparakets to a minor lordship. Tell me, why should I allow you to pollute the Orlesian nobility any further than it's already been muddled? Surely, even a minister could do worse than have the Inquisition in her debt. I am a well-positioned woman. I require something more concrete than vague promises of future gifts. And do not attempt to charm me. I am far too old to tolerate it. What can you possibly provide that will make your petition worth my effort? Information. Unless you believe your sources better than agents of the Inquisition. Normally, I wouldn't trust your discretion. But the left hand of the Divine is working for you, is she not? Sister Leliana is a resourceful woman. I could certainly make use of her talents. Very well. Inquisitor, should you fulfill this bargain, I shall 
raise the du parquets into lordship. I must return to Valrayo to see that everything is in order. Please join me when you can. I received a letter from the House of Repose, Your Worship. They acknowledge their contract is null and void. There is no longer a price on my life. They're a polite bunch of ruthless murderers. I'll give them that. I regret we were forced to deal with them. That you are endangered by my part in the game. Did I ever mention I used to be a bard? You were a singer? Bards entertain the Orlesian court. They sing, play music, make charming conversation, and spy. Many young nobles put on a mask and practice playing the game in such a fashion. I don't imagine many first-born heirs join those ranks. No. I was a rather foolish exception. During one particular intrigue, I encountered the bard sent to kill my patron. We fought. Or perhaps scrapped is the better word. Both of us terrified. We were at the top of a steep flight of stairs. The other bard threw a knife and I pushed him away from me. You can imagine the result. You've drawn a clear enough picture. But it was such a waste, Inquisitor. When I took off his mask, I knew him. We'd attended parties together. If I'd stopped to reason, if I'd used my voice instead of scuffling like a common thug, I'll always wonder who that young man would have grown into. He seemed willing enough to murder you for the game. Perhaps. I feel I'm the last to judge whether or not he would have actually used the blade. In all the commotion, Forgive me, I don't believe I ever thanked you for helping me with this. Hold on to it. Don't lose sight of why you came here. I will never forget you helped save the House of Montillier, Inquisitor. And should you ever visit Antiva, stories of the welcome we'll give you will be told for years. My Lady Inquisitor, it's good of you to speak with me. I have news regarding one of your companions. The Tevinter. Mm. Has Dorian done something wrong? No, thank Froli. It's nothing like that. I have been in contact with his family. House Pavas, out of Carinas. Are you familiar with them? Familiar? We've never met, if that's what you're suggesting. I'm suggesting nothing. I'm only curious whether you know of his... situation. The family sent a letter describing the estrangement from their son and pleading for my aid. They've asked to arrange a meeting quietly without telling him. They fear it's the only way he'll come. Since you seem to be on good terms with the young man, I'd hoped... I'll see what I can do. Bless you, Inquisitor. The family will send a retainer to meet the young man at the Red Cliff Tavern to take him onward. If he truly does not wish this reunion, he can always end the matter there. I shall pray for your success and the young man's happiness. That's all we can hope for, is it not? Here we are. Dorian, there's a letter you need to see. A letter? Is it a naughty letter? A humorous proposal from some Antivan dowager? Not quite. It's from your father. From my father? I see. And what does Magister Hallward want, pray tell? A meeting. Show me this letter. I know my son? What my father knows of me would barely fill a thimble. This is so typical. I'm willing to bet this retainer is a henchman hired to knock me on the head and drag me back to Tevinta. You think your father would actually do that? No, although I wouldn't put it past him. Let's go. Let's meet this so-called family retainer. If it's a trap, we escape and kill everyone. You're good at that. If it's not, I send the man back to my father with a message that he can stick his alarm in his wit's end. There seems to be bad blood between you and your family. <laughs> Interesting turn of phrase. We've never talked about my family before. They're not happy with my choices, you see. Nor I theirs. What choices? Leaving Tevinter? That too. 
Let's go meet this retainer then. I wonder how much my father paid this man to wait around just in case I showed. <sighs> we'll find out soon enough. Uh-oh. Nobody's here. This doesn't bode well. Dorian. Father. So the whole story about the family retainer was just... what? A smokescreen? Then you were told. I apologize for the deception, Inquisitor. I never intended for you to be involved. Of course not. Magister Parvis couldn't come to Skyhold and be seen with the dread Inquisitor. What would people think? What is this exactly, Father? Ambush? Kidnapping? A warm family reunion? <sighs> this is how it has always been. You went through all of this to get Dorian here. Talk to him. Yes, Father. Talk to me. Let me hear how mystified you are by my anger. Dorian, there's no need to. I prefer the company of men. My father disapproves. Your father might be here to reach out. You could give him a chance. Let's just go. Dorian, please. If you'll only listen to me. Why? So you can spout more convenient lies? He taught me to hate blood magic. The resort of the weak mind. Those are his words. But what was the first thing you did when your precious heir refused to play pretend for the rest of his life? You tried to change me. I only wanted what was best for you. You wanted the best for you. Your fucking legacy. Anything for that. Don't leave it like this, Dorian. You'll never forgive yourself. Tell me why you came. If I knew, I would drive you to the Inquisition. You didn't. I joined the Inquisition because it's the right thing to do. Once, I had a father who would have known that. Once, I had a son who trusted me. A trust I betrayed. I only wanted to talk to him, to hear his voice again, to ask him to forgive me. He says we're alike. Too much pride. Once I would have been overjoyed to hear him say that. Now I'm not certain. I don't know if I can forgive him. Maybe if you keep working at it, keep talking. It was a start at least. Thank you for bringing me out there. It wasn't what I expected, but... It's something. Maker knows what you must think of me now, after that whole display. I think you're very brave. Brave? It's not easy to abandon tradition and walk your own path. At any rate... Time to drink myself into a stupor. It's been that sort of day. Join me sometime, if you've a mind. <laughs> 